Oh boy, this is not good. Good Lord, so much water. Oh no. Hey everyone. Well, I just spent three nights in my brand new Ember 191 MSLX. These are my first three nights and I got a real feel for what's this RV like. I tried to play with all of the features and uh, ran the heater, ran the AC, uh, made some coffee, used a microwave, slept on a few different couches and beds. I think I put this thing through its paces. So let's head inside and let's talk about my first impressions of the Ember Overland 191 MSLX. Okay, so after spending three nights in this new RV, I have some first impressions. Uh, my first impression and the most important one is I totally don't regret buying this at this point. A lot of times I'll get buyer's regret early on and this one for sure I've enjoyed more and more each day. I was a little nervous the first day. There was a lot of new things, trying to figure out the Truma Combi uh, instructions and just some other things that were kind of throwing me for a loop. But uh, I got settled in. I stayed in an RV park for the last three nights and that allowed me to, to slowly get involved. Uh, I also was only 30 minutes from my home. So that allowed me to, I basically went home each night and had dinner with my wife and then came back to the RV. So that also made it a little easier. I didn't make any big meals in the RV. Um, I did make coffee a couple of times and definitely took a little longer to, to heat up the water than at home, but that's okay. It is an RV. Um, it seems like the stove isn't too robust. I wouldn't exactly put a wok on this stove, but I knew what I was getting into. I know it was a smaller RV stove. And so it meets my expectations. I spent the first three nights in the Murphy bed on the mattress that came with it. And yeah, that mattress is thin. I'm a big guy and I burst right through that mattress to the wood. Unless I was laying flat in my back, my hip or my knees or my shoulder were buried into the wood. So we'll certainly be looking at either putting an additional topper on or getting a futon as I've seen some of the other YouTubers do. I'm not quite sure yet, but definitely my wife's not going to be too happy. I almost took the two bunk pads and slid them under the mattress, but I didn't want to deconstruct the bunk. The first night I slept really badly, to, to be honest, but that was partially because I was just learning how the heater worked. I didn't quite have it on properly at first, so it was getting cold and, and uh, I didn't have the vents all open in the back. So the, the flex room area was getting really cold and kept being drafty and, and really I think the whole tra trailer just needed to heat up once. It was uh, just about one degree Celsius or near, near freezing temperatures and so that first night was indeed quite cold and the trailer did stand up to it. I had the heater pad heating pads on, the, the water tanks, um, kept the heater on, everything worked just fine uh, but we didn't really get below freezing so it doesn't really count here in british columbia it's already getting to that temperature so uh, everyone's winterizing their rigs this week it's interesting how one couch is more comfortable than the other so this couch i'm sitting on here that's underneath the bed is a little more firm than the one sitting under the uh sitting in the in the slide out when i opened up the the couch here in the in, that's in the slide out i was pleased to see that there's a whole bunch of storage and a second table now Speaking of the tables, I'm not a big fan of the tables. I've already taken one of those tables out, I'm putting that in my garage for now. Uh, they're around, they weigh around 25 pounds a pop. Uh, they're a little wobbly. They, they're, they're kind of nice, but they're really hard to store. And I'm convinced moving that big, heavy metal piece around with all those heavy corners, uh, it's gonna end up marring the ground. I'm gonna drop it, it's gonna bang into something. It just didn't feel right. So for now, I'm just using a simple fold-out table from Costco. I'll probably find maybe a nicer fold-out table that we can use or a set of small oversized TV trays. We really don't need a lot, 
um, because we have the flex room built out like a desk, we have lots of workspace there if we need to prepare food, if we need to work on something or build something that we purchased. We have more than enough space there over in the office flex room area. So we don't really need a whole lot of table space around the couches except to eat and maybe set our things down. Also, the space to the sides of this couch are quite convenient to just drop all your wallet and all that stuff, even though you have to move it at the end of the night when you bring the bed down. This trailer is clearly solid. I mean, it's built very differently than the other RVs I've had, which were all built to be ultra lightweight, where they traded in uh, the heavy duty aspects of the construction to make it a little larger. This one is pretty darn heavy duty. I really like how when I walk on the floors, my last trailer I felt like I was walking on a trampoline. And in this one, the floors feel really solid. Again, I'm a bigger guy, so the fact that I can feel, uh, you know, like I'm on a solid footing is, is, is a real nice plus for this trailer. Uh, I was in rain for, for days now, very heavy rain at times. And so far, knock on wood, that there's been no uh, leaks yet that I've been able to find. So, so far, so good on that aspect. This is twice the price of the last RV that I purchased, which was pre-pandemic seven years ago. So I expected something a little nicer and I got something a little nicer. The fabric of the, the couches, the quality of the couches, the quality of the woodwork on the, on the cabinetry, it's, it's nice. Uh, you know, is this the top level, you know, $2 million house stuff that I've seen? No, but it's much nicer than the bullet or the Tahoe that I used to have. Uh, the, so far, again, knock on wood, the fridge has not provided any problems. I've had ice cream in the freezer, I've had food in the fridge, and so far it's performed admirably. The um, solar, well, the, the batteries, what little I've been on them, it's worked fine. I haven't really put it to the test since I've mostly been plugged in, but uh, we'll see how that holds up. I'm not going to be asking a lot of the batteries. We have a generator. We have, uh, we usually stay at sites every couple of days. So we'll just boondock for a night or two here or there. I don't really need to have some crazy off grid level of solar power. So I think we're going to be fine there. Uh, everything we brought in, you know, I weighed and, and, inventory nearly everything that we brought into the rv luckily because we had just had an rv i saved everything put it into boxes and we washed all up we brought in the the dishes i had the wheel chocks the leveler blocks the, everything that you needed for an rv except the sewer tube i had saved from the last rv so not only did i have it all saved which made moving into the rv very easily but i actually went ahead and cataloged it i'm going to do a separate video showing all of that showing exactly what i put in the rv for a brand new rv and exactly how much it weighed i wanted to see and i've always wanted to know how much is the weight of all this cargo I'm bringing in since I'm using fresh numbers. I just ran it through the scales, although I need to double check the numbers that I took. So I'm not going to uh, talk about them just yet, but I will publish the numbers that I got at the scale. And really, we don't plan on loading this really heavily. We're already pretty close to what we would normally keep in it, minus some clothes and, and maybe a synthesizer or a keyboard, little electric piano I like to bring along on long trips. Um, there's, there's not a lot more to put in this RV. We, we travel fairly light after a lot of years. Another thing I really like about this trailer is that it feels like an office. It feels like a professional environment. When I look around, when it's sitting out, right now I have the slide out in, I'm at a rest area, but when I have the slide out out and I, and I step into the room, it feels like I'm slipping into a, like a rented trailer that you'd have on set or, or something like that. Like it's not just your average RV, especially because it doesn't have a very big kitchen. It even more makes it feel like some sort of, of boardroom or, 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 or office kind of feel to it. Um, that I really like. There are times where we've been traveling where we'll have friends visit us along the way on the road. Those friends are usually professional friends. And it's always awkward when you have them come into your RV and they're sitting on the edge of your bed. And, you know, who wants to hang out in a bedroom, right? So now you can come into this RV. The bed is, is stowed away. And it just feels like an office. I really like that. I did get a little spooked on the manual specifically saying that there is a two inch ball required for this trailer and yet when you look on the actual coupler that's attached to this trailer it has stamped right into it two and five sixteenths so i was a little worried that perhaps i had left there with the wrong size ball i've looked on the facebook groups and, and everyone says it's for this size trailer it's five sixteenths so or two and five sixteenths i'm wondering if maybe that's the smaller um, art rock trailers they are okay sort of teardrop more style smaller trailers maybe those uh, have a two inch ball i'm not really sure but well i hope nobody out there reads the manual and decides to use a two inch ball 
uh, when it needs a 2 and 5 16 That would be scary. So, Ember, if you're watching this video, maybe update the manual, or the, the, the operator's manual, to sp call out the size of the ball. Because that confused me, and I had to call the dealer after I'd already gotten to the spot and saying, Hey, are you sure it's not supposed to be 2-inch? I've already removed the sink insert from the sink, the big round insert. I can see where it's already getting water damage. This RV, unfortunately, was a demo model sitting on the floor. So I think it's been around a bit. You could already see the underside had taken on some water. Those round kitchen inserts are built with like on MDF, I guess, or something like that. So even though the top is waterproof, the sides and the bottom aren't. So it's already showing its water damage. Uh, I decided to just take it out. I'll wrap it up and save it in my garage. That way, if I resell this, I've got the original sink insert. Um, doing the same thing with the table uh, and taking it out, keeping it in perfect condition. So if I do resell it, I've got that table ready to go. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to even keep the second one. So if somebody out there is really looking for another table to add to their ember, let me know. <laughs> I might get rid of one. So delivery day. I did uh, have one big hiccup on delivery day. I went to Woody's RV World uh, here in Abbotsford. They've got a bunch of dealerships around Western Canada. They are the only dealer in Western Canada that sells this trailer or this the Ember. So I didn't really have the ability to shop around. I had one place I could go uh, to one, and there was only two of these models out there in Western Canada, and I wanted this specific model. So I really didn't have a lot of wiggle room when it came to bargaining. Uh, but that's fine. I got a price that I thought was fair. And Woody's RV World has been really helpful. Bill Jones, who's the guy who sold it to me, he specifically was came off as a pretty straight-up sales guy. I knew a lot about the product. We treated it more like a partnership. I felt like it wasn't necessarily a customer relationship as much as a partnership. Now I'm sure he you know, made his profit off of me and all. But uh, in the end, this was about how do we get this thing shipped here from over in Alberta and get it into my hands for a price that was tenable. And he made it work and he threw in the slide topper. That was the one hiccup, even though he added the slide topper to the deal and it was in the offer that I would get the slide topper thrown in. Uh, it didn't make it onto the work order, so it was delivered to me without the slide topper. I was pretty upset at first, but Bill immediately was like, no, 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 no. So they, they, they're they getting the, the slide topper fixed later this week. When I drop this back off after this little trip, I'm going to leave it back at the dealership. They're going to go ahead and put the slide topper on for free, and they're going to go ahead and winterize the rig for me as a bonus. So again, kudos to Woody's. If someone out there is interested here in, in the lower mainland looking at an RV or if they're in Alberta, check Woody's RV, tell them, you know, you heard about it from me. And, uh, and especially if you're in the Abbotsford area, check with Bill Jones. He gave me a great walkthrough. Again, we partnered together. It's such a new rig. I had done a lot of research, so he told me a lot about it. I told him a few things about it since uh, I, we had watched a lot of the same videos and, and learned from a lot of the same sources. Uh, so it was great. Um, I, I expect to be talking to Bill here and there uh, as I go on, and I'll be going to there a lot for service. And, of course, since I'm returning it on Wednesday, I did run across a handful of small things and little fixes that need to happen. But to Ember and Woody's credit, they're all really tiny things. Uh, here's a little list uh, of the things. The front door sticks a little bit, so it doesn't quite close without having to slam it. I don't mind slamming it from the outside, but from the inside, it's a little rough. The left, left door, the cargo latch was the same thing. This was a floor model, so when you look at the latches and you look at the, 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 the metal, you can tell that these doors have all been opened and closed a thousand times already because they were on the on the demo room floor so that's just the way it is so with velcro is coming off a little bit on that bug screen where it's attached to the wall there was a few sections that were just coming off they can add some better adhesive or maybe a staple there um, we'll find out uh the shower faucet was just a little bit leaky nothing too crazy but i did take a shower and uh, tested that out the faucet was a little leaky the tabs on the sewer hose, the sewer hose storage area underneath, the tabs were broken off. One's pretty much missing. The other one, it fell off as soon as I went to use it. Again, I imagine it was probably open and closed a thousand times on the showroom floor, and it didn't last one day of me trying to use it. So hopefully they'll take care of that. The pump on the hot water is a little uneven, whereas it's a very steady uh, pattern uh, when it's on cold water like you would expect from a pump. It sort of surges uh, 
in an uneven pattern when the hot water is on. Uh, I don't know if that matters. It could just be the way it is. I've never had a true Macambi before, but I just wanted to mention it to them. I did take a shower, and yeah, that shower is a little small. <laughs> I'm a big guy. Um, that roll-out plastic film thing, we're going to have to figure out a solution. I think, as my wife was suggesting, we might try to rig up uh, maybe a round curtain ring that hangs out over the the uh, toilet a little bit and then maybe comes in and attaches with some magnets on the bottom so the water still flows into the to the shower but gives us a little more elbow room there uh the soap dish sort of insert that they put in the shower uh it just i've, I've heard other youtubers talk about it it is just ridiculously in your your face it's sort of either poking in your back or your chest one way or another it's it's just really oddly placed um it's something i may actually may want to try to actually cut out and re-fiberglass over one day if if it gets to me but it does work i mean i'm able to get clean that's the purpose uh the the hot water did last maybe five to seven minutes this was with it set on boost uh, with the, the truma and and I, I i imagine that's good enough i definitely got a few more minutes out of my old classic five gallon water heater but this is a hyper efficient uh, water heater i'll take it at face value that it's worth the trade-off um, i don't need to take a big long luxurious shower anyway when i'm uh taking a rv shower and in fact i didn't even try to do a camping shower or a navy shower whatever you call it in other words i didn't turn the water off and on while, while i soaked up i just let it run the whole time so if you turn the water off when you're soaping up and scrubbing well then you're going to get a lot of few extra minutes at the end so so i configured the bunks on my first configuration uh with bungees and some i went and got some e-track uh, attachments and got a few large oversized bungees and basically made sort of a, 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 a restraint at the top shelf. So we're able to put our Ikea bags and our duffel bags full of stuff and just throw them up there on the top shelf. The, the big bungee should hold everything in and we should be able to even overstuff a little bit. All we have to do is pull the bungee down, throw the stuff in, release the bungee. Uh, those E-Track connectors there was a bunch at princess auto so if you're in a part of canada where there's a princess auto they have a, a nice set of of e-tracks thanks bill the, the the rv dealer who told me about uh, that so i went there and got a whole handful of different rings and straps and i'll start to look online now that i know what i'm looking for I'll, I'll probably look online and see what other kinds of uh, attachments i can get so the last step uh, that I'm going to do here at the rest area after I finish this call is just get the tire link going. Um, it, it bothers me to drive around without a uh, tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, so with this one, I didn't realize it also comes with a alarm. I was a little worried about just having to rely on my cell phone for, for tire pressure management. I don't want to have to touch my cell phone if I don't need to while driving. And so apparently this is an alarm, I believe, that's going to go off if they um if there's enough variance in the pressure so then i know i can pull over i can look at my phone or i can just get out and look at the tires so i'll be installing this a little bit and uh, if i have any feedback on that i'll probably uh make a short video about that as well the nautilus system worked great it was really nice to have it all there i was able to use the black tank flush and it worked great so no more taking buckets of water to the to the toilet <laughs> to flush down when i'm trying to to drain the black it drained out really well. I couldn't get 20 feet of hose to fit in that storage down below. Um, I have a feeling if you have, I got the extra super extreme rhino, you know, monster thick stuff. So I believe it doesn't compress as much as the thinner inexpensive stuff. So I was able to only get a 10 foot section in there. So I got to figure out some place to store the other 10 foot section. Luckily I cleaned the hoses really well. It was only used once. So I'm not so worried about it, but I got this hose now. I got to figure out where to store it. I really enjoy the Stargazer window. Uh, it's, I've only been looking at clouds and rain for the most part, but it's really nice the amount of light that it brings in. And uh, the rest of my rig, as I may have mentioned now in some other video, but it doesn't have the European windows. This was caught in the supply chain. So this trailer has two big deficiencies that I see that are likely supply chain related. One is it has the frameless, simple windows that don't open very far. Uh, they just crack out a little bit around here rather than the big fat you know dome-like european windows that this this brand is known for 
Uh, they simply didn't have access to them when they were building this, tra this trailer, and it got these second-rate windows. They'll work just fine. I knew that going into the deal. The second thing was that I got high HT tires. I got Wrangler HT tires, not Wrangler all-terrain tires. They're decent, beefy-looking truck tires, but they're not the ones that you see in the, in the glossy manual. They're, they, they're not uh, all-terrain tires. I and mean, if you compare the AT series versus the HT series and some of the online comparisons, you can see very quickly that the HT tire underperforms compared to the AT tire. So that kind of was a bummer, but the reality is, is I'm planning on upgrading all the tires on my truck and I may try to beef up the tires here even further. We'll see how that goes uh, with the chip up to Tatoya took and the 700 miles of dirt road going up the Dempster Highway. I'm definitely concerned about what tires I have, but they're brand new tires. So I'll make a decision next year whether or not I'm just going to use these tires or put something a little beefier on the trailer. And this really should be fixed, Ember. Um, there is some metal on the side of the slide out that creates effectively a knife point that just sticks out on the slide out. So when I walked by, I actually put a little tear into my hoodie and almost tore my jeans just sliding by this hook. So it's, it's basically a point of, of sheet metal that just sits out on the edge of the slide out. Um, God forbid, should I be coming up from dealing with the tires or something and the slide outs out and you hit this, it, it legitimately could create a stab wound. I think if you hit it at the right angle. So I'm going to put some video of it here. Uh, Ember, if you're watching this, I really recommend you figure something out. I'm going to come up with some kind of foam ball or something that we put over that whenever we park, because I've already almost tore up two pieces of clothing. I, I, it's going to happen again. That was the first week. And now that I've taken this shakedown run, I'm going to bring it back to Woody's where again, they're going to fix all this little stuff. They're going to winterize it for me. And then I'm storing it indoors for the season. There's a chance that I may take a mid season trip, uh, either if I'm going to go down to California, which sometimes happens around Christmas time, uh, or if I decide to squeeze in one last trip before it gets too cold, uh, I may take it out again, but I'm planning on it being in this, uh, indoor storage at a farm in, in the uh, Fraser Valley of, of British Columbia. That's going to keep it really nice and clean. That's going to keep the decals or decals from uh, fading. Well, there's a lot of random thoughts about the Ember. Um, again, I'm totally stoked that I got this. I'm, I'm very happy about this trailer so far. Uh, I hope it stays that way. I hope I don't see any deal killers. Um, I own it now. I, I owe a huge amount of money because <laughs> I didn't pay for it up front. And this is a very expensive trailer. And uh, I plan to use the heck out of it. So expect to see a lot more videos here. I hope you enjoy them. I'm going to be trying to get to the BC interior as soon as it can. Uh, the snow starts to melt. Again, you might see a Christmas time trip down to Los Angeles or, or the first week of January uh, down to the Bay Area or Los Angeles. We'll see how it goes. Um, no promises yet. I'm still trying to figure everything out. Also, I'm going to try to put up some links, like some Amazon links, of all the things that I've bought and that I endorse that I think are the good versions of various uh, products uh, so you can take a look at if you're building out your RV and you're trying to figure out what you can buy. You can at least see what it is that I bought and whether or not you want to buy that same thing or not. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Love to hear your comments. I hope you enjoy the trailer as much as I do and expect to see a lot of it on this channel. Well, I made it home last night, but I went through about 50 to 60 kilometers of driving rain where it was a pretty strong rainstorm here in British Columbia. So I got home, I went to grab my stuff from the inside and guess what I found? Oh boy, this is not good. Good Lord, so much water. Oh no. Leaks, that's right, there were water leaks. Now this leak didn't come down from below. It appears that it's coming from the slide or maybe coming from the wheel well. I'm not really sure. But the good news is, is I'm taking it back to Woody's today anyway with a list of things to remediate and fix uh, and, and to get that slide topper installed. But unfortunately, I'll have to drop a bomb on them that they're gonna have to fix this water leak too. And if it takes longer, well, I wasn't planning on camping anytime soon. I was gonna let them winterize it. So we've got all the time in the world to fix this leak. Let's see where this goes. 
Well, there's dark clouds over the service department. Hope that's not a bad sign. Bye-bye.